What's up guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be reviewing Loop Master's new Bass VST, Bass Master. So I've actually had this VST now for about like two weeks and I really wanted to wait to put out a video because I wanted to really mess with it and really try it out and see if one first if I liked it because if I didn't I wouldn't even make a video but two and most importantly if it was a VST that I could actually recommend to you guys. Uh, one of the reasons you guys come to my channel I assume is because you trust my judgment so I wouldn't want to pitch you trash. I really wanted to make sure this was something that was actually worth your while. Now with that being said Loop Masters which is the company that actually makes this VST sent me this copy for free so I could try it out and although I'm not being paid to make this video there will be an affiliate link down in the description box uh, so if you guys do decide to pick it up just to know that you'll also be supporting me and my channel because I get a small commission at no additional cost to you so if you do decide to do that thank you so much I appreciate it nonetheless everything that I'm about to say is completely my opinion uh, hasn't been influenced by any any external factors so with that being said let's jump right in but all right now this is a VST right here now I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys when and the company reached out to me two weeks ago I was kind of skeptical on the plugin because when it comes to like low energy sounds for my beats I'm either using 808s which I have a ton of and for that what I do is I load up my samples into sample one which is a native studio one VST and do it that way or if I need a baseline then I just pull up like a silent one or like a massive or really any other you know synth VST and create my sounds that way on top of that I'm also skeptical to go when it comes to VSTs that claim to do only one thing because to me that feels restrictive like I said if I want a baseline I just pull up another synth like a silent or whatever and do what I have to do but I also have the versatility of maybe making a pad or a lead or whatever the case might be so for VSTs like this that claim to do one thing for them to be worth your while they have to do that thing very very well and I can tell you guys with all the certainty that after two weeks of playing with it and messing around with it I've been very very pleasantly surprised now before we dive in, the first thing you should know about this VST is that unlike any other synth or VST, this does not work off of oscillators. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what an oscillator is, think of it as like a sound engine that most VSTs and synths have. And essentially, this sound engine creates waveforms. They could be sine waves, sawtooth waves, triangle waves, whatever the case might be. You would then assign different parameters to those oscillators and add your effects in your filters, maybe combine two oscillators if your synth has that option and create your sounds that way. What makes this VST special, again, like I said, is that it doesn't use any oscillators. Instead, every single preset and sound that you'll hear and that you can create with this is actually a sample that was recorded from some of the best bass analog hardware. Now, the reason that's important to me or for you guys is that because it's not using oscillators, it means that this VST is going to consume less CPU power on your computer. So one, you don't get to, you don't have to drive your computer as hard and two, Two, that means you have more CPU left over to use other VSTs while having this running at the same time. Now, on top of that, because these are all analog samples, you're going to get some of the analog sound and feel, so you're automatically going to be separating yourself from whatever everybody else is doing with their bass lines. But all right, finally jumping into the VST, the first thing you'll notice is the design. It kind of carries this like white, light gray, dark gray kind of colorway, which I'm a fan of because usually that's easier on my eyes, especially if I'm looking at this for long periods of time. Now, I will be going over every single button and parameter on this VST, but I'm sure you guys are curious as to what the presets actually sound like, because like I said, there's over 350 mix ready presets. So if we drop down the menu here, you get a couple of different categories. You get introduction, simple, sub, swaggy, low, mid, harsh, smooth, modulated, percussive, other and you can actually create your own which i've already done here i've created two but let's go over to introduction and i'm going to pick the 808 riser and let's see what that sounds like let's go over now to another one bites the bass that one's really dope So if you want to do more like uh, live bass lines, you can use that. Let's head over to the sub section, go to the 808 sub.
Let's go over now and check some of the ones that I made myself. So this one, I called it Fat Sub, and it sounds like this. And then the other one that I made uh, was more of like a gritty Drake kind of bass. Now the two presets that I created I actually used last week in my beat making video, so if you want to check that out, I'm going to link it up top here. But as you can see, the presets are very high quality, I'm super super pleased with them, and although they're fantastic, and you can just use them if you want something quick, what really makes this VST shine are all the capabilities that you have when it comes to sound design. So let's say for example that you don't want to use any of the presets here, I'm going to go ahead and just put it back on the default sound, which is this. Let's go ahead and look over what you can do to make this really your own. Now, if you take a look at the top left, the first section you're going to encounter is the sample section. Now, the cool thing that they've done here is that they've divided this into two layers. You had a top layer and a sub layer. So the first thing you would do is from a blank slate, a blank default uh, preset, you would go in here, go to the top layer, select your sample, and you get a couple different categories. Again, you get high, low, mid, percussive, simple, and sub. Pick the one you want, then come down here on the sub layer and again, pick the one you want from the same categories. You could even drop the octave or raise the octave for the sub layer. And then your signal would be a combination of both of these. In the same section, you have your basic envelope. So attack, decay, sustain, release for the top layer. And then you have the attack and release for the bottom layer. Now from here, the signal will go into the mixer. And what's cool about this is that much like any other mixing console, here you get to decide how much of the top layer versus how much of the bottom layer you want added into your final sound. So for example, let's say I found my two samples that I want to use, everything is good to go, but I want more of the bottom end, less of the top to make it more beefy, then all you would simply do is bring the top layer down and bring the sub up. Now if you take a look, there's also this little button here called direct out. Basically what this means is that if you have it turned on, the signal is going to bypass or skip the filter section, the filter LFO section, and the layer effects section and go directly out to your master bus. If you have it turned off, then it's going to be affected by all these three sections that we just discussed. So if you want your sound to be clean and unaffected, make sure you have this turned on. If you want it to have some effects, leave it turned off. Now moving over to the right, you're gonna have the filter section. Now here, you're going to get the option to choose from some very common filter types. You're also going to get your uh, basic envelope, so attack, decay, sustain, release. But what's also cool is that once you pick your combination and you know you're, you set your envelope parameters the way you want to, you can actually control how much of that you want added to your sound from this little uh, amount knob here. Now moving on down, we're going to have a pre-drive knob. Now what's cool about this is that before your signal even gets to the effects, you can add a little bit of distortion, a little bit of that grit. So if you wanna create something like that, you have the option to do so. We also have the cutoff knob and the resonance knob, some basic parameters here for your filters. Moving on down, we have the filter LFO. So here you get to pick what kind of LFO shape you want to use. So you get to pick from sine, triangle, square, saw, random drift, saw up, or saw expression. And on top of that, again, much like above with the envelope, you get to pick how much of that you want applied to your sound. Moving on to the right, we have the LFO rate knob. Now this you can actually control yourself or just leave it on synchronized. We have the phase control knob. And last but not least, we have the trigger on and off switch. Now basically what this on and off trigger button does is that if you have it off, your sound could start at any point of your LFO shape. So if you have, for example, a sine wave, you could start in the beginning, in the middle, in the end, somewhere in between. And although that could be interesting, it creates a kind of like an inconsistent sound. So if you wanna have a more consistent sound, I would say turn this on because that means that every time you press that key, your sound will always start at the beginning of the LFO shape. Now moving on down, we have kind of like this glide, pitch control, mod control section. Now if you're someone that likes to add slides to your 808s, then let me tell you, you're in for some great news because this VST does it for you internally. So if you take a look, you have two options to choose from for your glides. You have Portamento and Legato. And then of course you have your glide wheel and this operates based off of milliseconds so and seconds. So you can go anywhere from zero milliseconds to 10 seconds. My friend, that is a really, really long slide. But if you wanna do that, you can definitely do it. Now moving on down, we have the pitch controls. Now this here is your pitch control wheel. You could also use the one on your MIDI keyboard if it does come with one. But the cool thing is here you can set the range of of your 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 pitch i guess throw you can do anything from one semitone and these are all semitones to a full octave 
12 semitones, so I'll show you guys what that looks like, or sounds like, rather. Or you could do like just two. So if you're doing hip hop, probably you're gonna wanna stay with like 12. And what's cool too is that you could, if you don't wanna use the internal glide feature, you can just automate the pitch control section and do the same thing. Moving on down, we have the mod wheel section. And basically what these are, these are three knobs that are mapped to the mod control wheel and you can assign a parameter pretty much any parameter on this vst to each of these knobs so let's say for example on the first one i'm going to keep the pre-drive so that's going to control this up here uh, on the second one let's leave it at cutoff so that's going to control the cutoff here on the filter and the third one let's see maybe i just want to control the whole top layer of my sound now from here i can determine how much of that amount of this parameter amount i want to send to the mod control wheel so let's say for the pre-drive i wanted to control you know like 25 percent for the cutoff i wanted to control like 50 percent and for the top level we'll just kind of leave it around 50 as well so every time that i i move this mod wheel i am controlling those three parameters in the amounts that i have set so i'll show you guys what that looks like So you can go crazy and kind of experiment and create all kinds of different sounds with all these parameters. Moving on to the next section, we have the layer effects. Now you're going to get three main ones. You're going to get distortion, stereo chorus, and reverb. Now you're gonna get a couple drop down menus with each. So under distortion, you're going to get desk, drive, fuzz, crush, and dual. So I'll play some of those for you guys. And to turn it on, you go ahead and hit that light at the top. And make sure that direct out is turned off. Let's go over to maybe drive. And crut and dual. You could also add a, a stereo chorus, as we said, and from here you get gentle to tune, widen, and uber. So let's do widen, see what that sounds like. And then last but not least, let's add some reverb. So you get to choose between bright, mid, and dark. I'm going to go with dark. <laughs> so you have, you have a couple options to play around with. And of course, you could always add your own effects in your own mixing console on your DAW. Now, moving on, the last section that we have is the master effects section. Now, this right here is kind of like the cherry on top because, yes, you do have your master fader, of course, so you can determine how much of this you want to output into your DAW. But if you take a look, we also have a frequency booster. So from what I found, this kind of works like a compressor where it takes your signal at the end and it gives it that extra drive and that extra push. So if you take a look, we have the main fader here to determine if you want it to be at 100% or zero but what makes this cool is that in the same fashion as everything else in this VST you really get a lot of control so you get to control how much of this you want to be applied to the top end of your sound the middle and the lows but that is it guys as you can see this thing is a powerhouse and as I mentioned I was skeptical in the beginning but after playing with it for a while I can say that this is a really good tool for any producer to have in their arsenal whether you're making hip-hop or electronic or whatever other genre you might be into this is a great tool to have as far as pricing goes, this regularly retails for $99, but at the moment, they actually have an introductory discounted price of $69 up until August 6th. So if you want to pick it up, this is the time to do it. And like I said, there will be a link down in the description box for you to do so. But that is it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this review, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already, but I'll see you guys on the next one.